hey there guys and welcome back on this week's show tips and tricks episode 5 Well, we have four of these shows under our belts, and today is episode five. And I have met with some really, really positive response from you guys about these tip shows. You seem to enjoy them, so I've come up with another list of five. And the first tip of today's show, well, you know what? It all starts up with glue-ups. Well, at some point in time in the span of your woodworking, you are going to be using one of these. And it's a bar clamp, simple as that. Use it for your end grain cutting boards, tabletop surfaces, making a workbench, whatever. But the problem is, is that a lot of times this black pipe that so many of us use, once you get your board on here and you get it all clamped into place, it leaves black marks on the back of our work. As well, you get glue all over your clamp. So how can you avoid that? Masking tape. That's all it takes is masking tape. So what you want to do is measure or know what the final clamping distance is and then about an inch less than that, peel off some wide masking tape, just like this. And you'll just lay it on top of your clamp, rub it down. And now this is going to do two things. It's going to give you a protective barrier between your work and the black iron and as well it's going to give a protective layer between the glue and your pipe so all you need to do at that point you lay your boards in place once you clamp it down you've measured so you know that you're not going to be crushing in on this tape and there you go a very quick and very easy protective layer to keep both your work and your clamps in better condition than what mine are right now so when you're done it's a simple removal process, as simple as peeling off a Band-Aid. You just get the end, peel it up, and then any mess, any tape, any glue is gone and your clamp is back to normal. Well, in Tips and Tricks Episode 4, I showed you how to find the exact center point of a circular object using a framing square and a combination square. But what if you want to find the diameter? Well, if you have some, you can use calipers, but what if you don't have those calipers? Or even more so, what if the circle that you're trying to find the diameter of is bigger than what your calipers will allow? Well, you don't need any special equipment to figure this out. I'm pretty sure that all of you have this stuff in your shop already. Now I've placed a straight edge here just to help me align it on film. Um, but all you need is a ruler and a couple of scraps of stock um, that have been cut so that their edges are square. So what you'll do is you'll take one, align it up with the one mark on your ruler and slide your circle over until the edge of it touches your piece of board. Then take your other piece of stock and slide it up to the edge of your circle. And all you need to do is read the measurement here at this side of the stock, subtracting one because you started at the one line. So for here, we're reading just a little less. It looks like about eight and seven sixteenths. So for that, you'll might take away the one inch. This circle is seven and seven sixteenths in diameter. So there you go. If you're not sure and you need an accurate measurement of the diameter of a circle, a couple of scraps of wood and a ruler will serve you pretty well to get an accurate dimension. Well, the third tip of the day has to do with mortising in a hinge. And there's a lot of people that just do it by hand. And I don't know, depending on your experience level, you can have good or, you know, really iffy results. So one of the more accurate ways to do it is with a router, whether it be a handheld trim router or whether it be um, a plunge router, etc. It doesn't matter. The problem is how do you set your bit to make it so that it's perfect to fit your hinge so that you don't get it too deep or you don't have it too shallow? Well, that's what I'm going to show you here now, how to set the bit depth 
on your router for mortising in a hinge. Well, there are plenty of ways to set the bit height for your uh, router bit in order to mortise in a hinge. But the easiest and one of the quickest by far is what I'm about to show you here. Take two of your hinges and you want to sit them on the edge of a scrap piece of wood. From there, you'll take your router and sit it on top of that hinge. And at this point, all you need to do is dial down your bit until it touches your piece of scrap stock. Once you get it set so that it is dialed in to just touch that piece of stock, lock it in place, and there you go. That is your bit height set exactly what you need to mortise in this hinge perfectly flush in your door. Tip number four here today is all about finding the center of a board without having to divide fractions. Um, this board here, if I measure it, is four and one eighth. So half of that would be two and a sixteenth. But let's say that the measurement was a little more obscure than that and you didn't want to get into messing around with the fractions. Well, there's an easy way to find the center of a board without having to do really any serious math or have to deal with any of those fractions. So what I've done is I've just clamped a straight edge here onto this side, and that is just to give me something for the ruler to register against at the edge of the board here. So all you want to do is tilt your board, your ruler, while it's up against your straight edge until you get the opposite edge lined up with a mark that is divisible by two. In this case, I've lined it up with the six. So if I place a mark now right here at the three inch mark, which is half of six, that should be the center of our board. So to test that theory now, if I measure from one edge to where that mark is, it should be four and, or sorry, two and a sixteenth, because we measured this board at four and an eighth. So if I move my ruler up, can you see that there? Two and a sixteenth, dead center. And I didn't have to do any math or any kind of figuring out. You can do it any way you want. You can line it up here on this edge and then again, un tilt it until you get it divisible by two. There's eight up at the top end. I'm lined up down here. So I can place a mark right here at four. And if I measure it again, two and a sixteenth dead center. So there you go. A little tip. If you don't want to add or subtract fractions by tilting your ruler to a more divisible number, you can very easily find the center of any board that you have. Well, I don't know if you guys have noticed a pattern when it comes to my tip shows, but what I like to do is to give four tips that are fairly you know, quick and easy and simple. And the fifth tip is usually something a little more extensive. And that holds true again for today with episode five. And what we're going to deal with today is the card scraper. Well, the card scraper is a great little item for getting better finishes on your product. And what it is, is it's a piece of steel that you end up filing a square edge on one side and then you burnish it to give like a metal hook. And the way that it works is you, you hold the card like this and you bend the card. You don't snap it in half, but you give it a little bit of a bend and you can run it along and it will take off these fine little curly cues off of your wood to give you a finer finish. Some people can use these cards uh, and actually eliminate sanding. They get so good at it. I'm not one of those guys. But anyway, the problem is, is that bending it like that and holding the edges of the card like that, it can be hard on your hands. So I'm going to show you guys today how you can avoid that or how you can make it easier to use your card scrapers. Well, the first thing that you're going to need is a piece of stock. And in this case, 
it's a scrap of pine. It's half an inch thick. It's, I don't know, maybe two inches wide. I don't even know. Two and a half inches wide, but it is two inches longer than what my card scraper is. So this piece is eight inches long. The first thing that we're going to want to do is mark our center on this piece. And then we'll just draw a square line across that. Now at this point on our piece of stock, you want to sit your card scraper on it so that it is centered on its length. So we'll just check that there. Should be an inch on either side. And once you get that centered, we're just gonna place a mark here. And again, we'll place a square line across here to mark the edges of our scraper. Well, now at this point, you want to place your scraper so that it's about an inch below the edge of your board, just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, roughly an inch. You know, here we can even go three quarters. It's just to get an overhang at the bottom so that your scraper is not sitting flush with your board anymore. So we'll arrange this here so that it's three quarters of an inch down. It's not really that imperative. And we'll just draw a line there just to mark where it's gonna go. Now here's the thing. At this point now, you want to measure between the edge of your board and that line you just drew. In this case, it's about one and a half and we're going to place a mark in the center. Right there. As well, what we want to do is at that same measurement, roughly, we're going to come out about a quarter of an inch. I'm not even measuring it, but about a quarter of an inch, we're gonna place a mark here, and then on this side as well, we're gonna come out about a quarter of an inch, and again, at the center mark, same as what we marked just here, three quarters, we're just gonna place a mark just like that. So at this point now, we need to add just a little bit of hardware. Well, what I have done is I've drilled a 1 16th diameter through hole here. I have drilled a 1 16th diameter through hole at this measurement. And in our center mark, I've drilled a 5 16th diameter through hole. And this here is a 3 quarter inch diameter, uh, just sort of an inset, about 1 eighth of an inch. And that will accept one of these threaded inserts. So we're just gonna take our insert, get a whackometer, and drive it home in our hole here. Just like that. Doesn't get much simpler than that. Now at this point, what I have is I have a number 10 half inch screw with a number 10 washer and then a quarter inch fender washer. And I'm going to use the 1 16th pilot hole that I put in here and we're going to screw these washers down. Now you don't want to crank on it. The reason you don't want to crank on it is because we need space underneath. So let's get this second one here and I'll show you what that space is for. So there you go. There's our second one in place. Make sure it's loose. And at that point, what goes in there is our card scraper. See, I have that one too tight. So this one's good. Oh no, it's good. So what you want to do is you want to have it so that this sits with an overhang down at the bottom. Now it can be the three quarters that we measured at or it can be an inch or whatever you like. And now you don't want to crank on this, but just sort of tack it down just a little bit, just so that it sits put. There you go, just like that. Now there's one more thing that we need to do here. Well, I decided that instead of using a jig knob, I was going to use a T-bolt. And really all you want to do is from the back side now, you want to thread this T-bolt in all the way. It's going to come in contact with your scraper. When it does, don't stop turning it. You want to turn it a little more. Now you see what we're doing here? 
we're giving it a bow. We're bending it. Bending it just like what we would if we were using it by hand. So how does this help us? Let me show you. Well, we'll just get our piece of stock placed back here in the clamp on the bench. And this little simple jig now is bowing our card scraper and doing the job that is so tiring on the hands of keeping it in that position. And now you have essentially made yourself an economy card scraper. And there's very little fatigue on the hand because you don't have to constantly be bending it. You can use it in reverse if you want to get the results that way, whichever way you want. But it's a lot less fatiguing on your hands so you don't have that uh, bend. So there you go. A very simple uh, economy card scraper holder. You can make it as pretty or as rustic as you want, but either way, it's one heck of a great idea and it goes a long way to saving your hands in the shop. And there you have it. Five tips and tricks, episode five. Guys, these tips and tricks are not anything mind blowing and they are nothing that other woodworkers before me haven't come up with. They are everywhere. Everywhere you look nowadays, there seems to be a tips and tricks video or someone showing you the easy way to get around something or the easy way to do something. And is there anything wrong with that? Absolutely not. We love this hobby that we have and the more that we can do to make it easier for us and to make it enjoyable, as long as we're still being safe, who's to say that we're wrong? Things like instead of trying to divide 630 seconds on your center of your board, make it a little easier for you and divide six inches instead. That sort of thing, you know? Don't make it hard, make it easy. Like, honestly, guys, these tips will go a long way to, in some cases, saving your hands, like with the card scraper, and in other cases, just saving your mind, like when it comes to dividing imperial fractions. I don't think anybody likes doing that stuff. Guys, I wanna thank you so much for tuning in this week. These shows are honestly a lot of fun for me. I enjoy these shows because I get to bring you something that, well, you may have heard before, but now you have a refresher, or you may have never heard before, and now it's your opportunity to learn it and use it in your shop if it's applicable to what you do. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, click the bell and then you won't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. It's been a lot of fun today, guys. I want to thank you again for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed today's content. I hope that you can take something away from one of these tips, or all of them for that matter, uh, that will help you in your shop. And more importantly, I honestly hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.